Are you ready? U N I T Y. Come on! Welcome to Unity Extra. It's 7 p.m. on Unity Extra, and I've got a very interesting, informative, and engaging one hour show lined up for you. Today, Wednesday, we are talking about sexual health, so make sure you stick around. Sexual Health Unwrapped, the ins and outs, a three part radio series on Unity Extra. Listen tonight from 7 till 8 p.m., where your questions get answered by healthcare professionals about sexual health, from how to stay safe and avoid sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. Sexual Health Unwrapped, the ins and outs. Listen tonight on Unity Extra. Hello and welcome to the Sexual Health The In and Out show. Uh, this is a radio series with Unity Extra along with Haringey Council. Sexual health and relationships matter. We encourage early and regular testing as data shows that the most common contracted STIs by young people are chlamydia and gonorrhea, which can be asymptomatic. Condoms are the best way to protect yourself against STIs and unplanned pregnancy. Haringey have a free pan London condom scheme, hashtag come correct. Once you register, you can access free condoms anywhere across London, wherever you see the come correct window sticker. Please go to your local pharmacy in Haringey. So tonight, the focus of the show is HIV and PrEP. And joining me is Mr. Dominic Riley, who is the North Central London PrEP Programme Manager, Sexual Health and HIV Services at the Central and Northwest London NHS Foundation Trust. Thanks for joining me, Dominic. So it seems like, you know, you wear a lot of hats because that was quite a long title. Uh, Break it down for me. What's a day in the life like for you? So basically, my job is about raising awareness and uptake of PrEP, which is a medication that protects you from contracting HIV. And I'm responsible for doing that in North Central London, which is Camden, Islington, Haringey and Barnet. So some of the stuff that we have been doing over the last 12 months since I've started the post is an online targeted prep promotion campaign, which has been running across social media channels like Snapchat and Instagram, Mm -hmm. as well as dating apps like Grindr. Um, We have developed a range of prep promotion materials. So that's things like t-shirts, tote bags, condom packs that get the message about PrEP out there into the community. We've developed new informational resources, such as a quick guide to PrEP that helps people understand the key headlines about what PrEP is, who it's for, where to get it. Uh, We've done a piece of work uh, called PrEP for Black African Communities, where we partnered with two local organizations. One was Emoja Health Forum, and the other one was Embrace UK, who are actually based at the Selby Center in Haringey, so they're local. Um, And that was specifically looking at the need for PrEP within Black African communities. And um, finally, we've looked at ways to make it easier to book a PrEP appointment. So now, for instance, you can book a PrEP appointment online at Mortimer Market Centre and Archway Centre. So if you live in Haringey and you want to start PrEP, you can book the start appointment yourself via our website. Okay, I mean, that's quite a bit. There's a lot of work going in there. And I know there's um, those, those stuff that's sent in the post where you can test yourself. Is that part of PrEP or what is that? Yeah, so one of the services that runs across London, including for Haringey, is called Sexual Health London. Um, And that is an organisation that is linked in with NHS services. So, for example, uh, we can access your results um, at our clinics if you test via SHL. And actually, we often encourage people to test there before they come in for PrEP. Mm. Uh, So then they've got their baseline results for HIV and all the other STIs that you can test for. So you can order a kit online at shl.uk. They'll send that out. Usually it arrives the next day, day after, it's super quick to do. Uh, Once you've sent it off, you often get the results back within two or three days. Um, And yeah, it's just a super convenient way of testing that means that you don't have to go into the clinic. Um, I guess one thing to say would be if people are concerned about having a test kit arriving at home, because maybe you live with people that you don't wanna talk about the fact that you're testing with, Firstly, when it's sent out, it looks like something that's very discreet when it arrives. So it's not really obvious that it's a testing kit. Mm -hmm. But secondly, if you really don't want it to arrive at your address, what you can actually do is arrange to pick it up from your local sexual health clinic Mm -hmm. at the reception when you go in. So you wouldn't have to wait when you arrive. You just pick it up within a couple of minutes and then go away and do your testing and send it off in the post. Then you get the results via a text message and it's an online portal. So you just access that. So quite quickly and to the point. And I mean, one of the things we're 
we're really going to get into throughout the show but that i also really want to talk about at the moment is hiv and prep you know there's still this notion among young people that someone who's contracted hiv can die from the virus so kind of like almost immediately you get it and you die yeah. why do you think that is yeah so it's basically one of the key reasons is just that people's understanding of hiv is very often still anchored in the world that existed in the 80s and 90s when hiv was first around mm -hmm. so one of the things to say is that hiv if it's left untreated leads to aids which is acquired immune deficiency syndrome mm -hmm. and that's like the end point of hiv so if you have no treatment eventually if you have hiv you'll develop aids and that's effectively like your whole immune system has shut down mm -hmm. and you're very susceptible to illnesses and something that would be quite every day um like taking getting a flu or something like that could actually become fatal in that situation because mm -hmm. you have no immune system. So people remember HIV from those days of the 80s and 90s. The reality now is that we have extremely effective medications mm -hmm. that mean that somebody who tests positive for HIV comes into the clinic, they go on treatment immediately and they it now have- progress. Exactly, yeah. so they have a normal life. Um, what are the most common signs of the symptoms that, you know, someone has contracted HIV? How can, not that, you know, and everybody else can tell, but if someone maybe has, what are the most common symptoms to look out for? So after the exposure to HIV, there's usually in most people a short flu-like illness that occurs two to six weeks after the infection has occurred. Mm -hmm. So the feeling is basically like you're having a flu. So it's also something that's very like every day and could be confused with lots of other things. Then one of the key things about HIV is you really can't rely on symptoms because after that initial kind of flu experience, you can then have a period of years and this can literally be up to like 10 years where you don't really have any other really outward symptoms. Um, so you're not aware that there's anything mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that the virus continues to be active and it causes it progressive yeah. damage to your immune system. Which is why so, it's important to get tested. Exactly. Um, what are some of the ways that someone can contract HIV? Because we know that it's not just sexually, even though that's one of the biggest parts, but what ways can people contract HIV? So, the probably the key way is unprotected sexual intercourse mm -hmm. so primarily that's going to be vaginal or anal sex without mm -hmm. using a condom so oral sex carries a significantly lower risk of transmission and there's only ever been a very small number of cases of hiv linked to oral transmission so it's not particularly something that we're concerned about in relation to hiv specifically mm -hmm. even though you can catch lots of other things from doing <laughs> oral sex yeah. but in terms of hiv it's going to be condomless vaginal or anal sex would be the key way that people get it people can also get it from sharing contaminated needles uh, so that, for instance that would be something that affects people who take drugs um, or I don't know maybe it could even be um, the kind of weightlifting drug that um, people take sometimes mm -hmm. like if they're sharing needles with their friends um, and then it can also be passed from an infected mother to her baby during pregnancy, childbirth, or breastfeeding. So that's if the mother doesn't know that she has HIV. Mm. If she does know, there's ways to control it and make sure that that doesn't happen. But again, it goes to the importance of testing. And, tested, yeah. and that's why it's very routine now, if you are pregnant, that you would have an HIV test just to make sure uh, that that doesn't happen. In the past, it also used to be transmitted um, well, this was really in the 80s that it was transmitted through contaminated blood or blood products, mm -hmm. but that isn't something that you would worry about anymore. So if you need to have a blood transfusion, you can be completely assured that the blood is fine. It's just there was an issue with that in the 80s and some people did end up getting infected with HIV. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the safest ways of preventing, you know, getting HIV and spreading it to others? You've mentioned that, you know, one of the key ways of getting is through sex internal, I mean, vag vaginal or anal sex. Um, but how can it be prevented, you know? Yeah, so um, I guess the key technologies, we call them HIV prevention technologies that we've got. I mean, the number one would be condoms because they protect, provide really high levels of protection against HIV. And in addition, they protect you against lots of other STIs as well, like chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes. Um, so they're kind of a first line of defense. If somebody is sexually active 
uh, but they have a problem maybe with using condoms all of the time or they just really aren't getting on with condoms, uh, then something else that we have available is PrEP. So that's pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, What's that? So that's an anti-HIV medication that people mm -hmm. can take who are HIV negative and it keeps them HIV negative. And the headline about PrEP is that it's 99% effective when taken correctly. So it's super effective. It's just about making sure that it's taken correctly. And that's why we're out here and wanting to promote PrEP in the community so that people who could be at risk of HIV are aware of the fact that it's offered free on the NHS at your local sexual health clinic. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those conversations where if if it's um, if it's undetected, then they wouldn't know to check for it. But in terms of undetected, how would somebody know, you know, when someone is HIV positive if it's undetectable? So undetectable when it comes to HIV is actually something that happens when a person goes on their HIV medication and it brings the level of the HIV virus down to a really super low level uh, in their blood so that when this particular test is performed which is called a viral load test to test for how many copies of the HIV virus are in a milliliter of blood the test can't actually pick up that there's any HIV virus there so then so, is it impossible or possible to pass it on if it's undetectable? In that situation, it's not possible for them to pass it on if mm -hmm. they're undetectable. So the test isn't picking it up and there's two crucial things. One is the person who has the HIV is very healthy under those conditions because it means that's how they have a normal life expectancy. It means the HIV isn't attacking their immune system. But secondly, because it's been brought down to such a low level, they can't pass the HIV on to anybody. Oh, that's really good. Um, so at what point does someone, you, you know, we've talked about it being undetectable. Um, at what point does it become detectable? How then do we know if the symptoms aren't always obvious? At what point does someone with HIV becomes, when do the symptoms become detectable? So somebody who's living with HIV uh, will be in specialist care at an HIV clinic. So we have one, if you live in Harrogate, you probably would be referred to the Bloomsbury Clinic at Mortimer Market Centre. That's an HIV specialist clinic. And you will have a consultant that you see at regular intervals and they will monitor basically uh, the amount of HIV um, in your body and then they can for instance if they need to they could address the drugs that you're on but also they'll be able to keep you updated about what your status is and whether you are still undetectable so that's something that is discussed on a regular ongoing basis with your consultant yeah so well the key at this point is to make sure so far is to make sure that you get tested make sure that you use condoms make sure that you get prep if you just don't agree with condoms and we're going to go on a very quick musical break and after that we're going to come back we're going to speak more about hiv will there be a cure for the virus and much more uh, on the sexual health ins and outs on unity extra remember sexual health and relationships matter we encourage early and regular testing as data shows that the most common contracted stis by young people are chlamydia and gonorrhea which can be asymptomatic so you know you want to get tested we'll be right back uh, welcome back to unity extra you are just listening to waterfalls by tlc it's a lovely wednesday evening and we are on the sexual health the ins and outs radio series today we're talking about hiv and prep with dominic riley Dominic Riley is, this is a mouthful, so hold on for it, the North Central London Prep Program Manager for Sexual Health and HIV Services at the Central and Northwest London NHS Foundation Trust. Ooh. Uh, so our key messages are the ins and outs of sexual health. They are important. So say something to somebody who is trusted and a professional. Sexual health and relationships matter. You encourage early and regular testing as data shows that the most common contracted SDIs are by young people and chlamydia and gonorrhea, which can be asymptomatic. Condoms are the best way to protect yourself against STIs and unplanned pregnancies. Haringey have a free Pan London condom scheme, come correct. Once you register, you can access free condoms across London, wherever you see the ComCorrect window sticker. Please go to your local pharmacy in Haringey. So earlier we we're talking about HIV, you know, and the ways of transmission. Let's pick up from where we've left off. Uh, there are some more questions that I have. I've got loads of them, but <laughs> we'll start with a few that we have, uh, which were sent in from the young people um, throughout all of Haringey. 
at what age can someone contract HIV? I know you mentioned earlier about passing from baby to mother, mm -hmm. uh, but what age can somebody contract HIV? So really the key thing is that at any age, and so it's really about particular risk factors for HIV. So we talked about, as you say, it being passed from mother to baby. And obviously in that case, a child could even be born with HIV. Um, but normally, obviously we'd be thinking more about it going through sexually transmitted routes. So then that's really about if you're sexually active. But, you know, it could be a very young person who's sexually active. It could be someone who is retired, you know, in their 70s, 80s, who's still sexually active. They could contract HIV. So it really affects all age groups. And it's more around this risk factor of condomless penetrative sex. It does also affect particular groups more so than others. Um, so if we look at new HIV transmissions, we still see that gay, bi and other men who have sex with men are still disproportionately affected by HIV. Do we know why that is? Um, so it really comes down to the fact that if you are gay, bi or MSM, you're more likely, when in terms of your sexual partners, you're more likely to come across somebody who's living with HIV because there's already a high prevalence of HIV within that community relative to the general population. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so that's really what it comes down to. I mean, the good news is actually that the rates of new HIV transmissions are falling, um, and that's for all groups affected by HIV. Um, and one of the reasons that ha that is happening is because people are getting tested more. Uh, as a result of that, they go on to treatment early, and then people living with HIV become undetectable, like we said, so they're not mm -hmm. passing it on. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is also that as always, we've had condoms, but in addition to that now, we do have PrEP, uh, which has been really taken up by some gay and bi men, um, some sections of that community, less others, and that's why we're still trying to promote it. Um, but that is a great technology to make sure that people don't contract HIV. Yeah, uh, that's, that's brilliant, actually. It's good to have these resources. Uh, who is most at risk to get HIV because we mentioned that some communities more than others but I know it's not just about communities in terms of just individuals who's the most at risk yeah so we always say everyone should have some awareness and consciousness of HIV because mm -hmm. it could affect anyone but it's also important to say that there are groups who are more at risk and three that I would mention would be as I said gay bi and other men who have sex with men I would also say women who have sex with men who have sex with men which is a bit of a mouth for, but <laughs> that could include for instance trans women um, and also straight or bi women who are having sex with men who also have sex with men um, and then also if you are from a country or you have sex with people who come from a country with higher rates of HIV so that includes many countries in sub-Saharan Africa and parts of Asia and it's as a result of that for instance that we still see higher levels of HIV diagnoses among people who are of black African ethnicity in the UK. Yeah. Um, another question that we had come in was what are the most common reasons why young people are getting infected with HIV? So the most common reason, again, is going to be it will be through the sexually transmitted route because, um, I mean, basically that's the kind of key activity that most young people are going to be engaging with. There's obviously relatively a quite small number of people that are doing injectable drugs, mm -hmm. uh, for example. And even if they are, we have things like needle exchanges now, which mean that people can go and get a supply of clean needles rather than sharing needles. So the key thing is going to be this thing of having unprotected penetrative sex. Yeah. Uh, uh, the question, which is probably the most popular question that we had, was can you still have sex if you have HIV? Yes, you can. So many people who are living with HIV also have happy, fulfilled, safe sex lives. So the key thing, as we talked about earlier, is that if your HIV status is undetectable, you can't pass on HIV to your sexual partners. And the studies that established that that was the case were looking at scenarios where it was couples where one person had HIV and the other person wasn't living with HIV. And that was very often unprotected. So it was condomless sex and the HIV was not passed on from one partner to another. Um, even in the situation where a person wasn't um, undetectable, then condoms obviously do provide uh, great protection against HIV. So that would be another option for people who are living with HIV. Um, so yeah, you can have a happy, healthy sex life if yeah. you're living with HIV. 
Um, another question that we came in, and I know you touched on this briefly earlier, but what was the difference between HIV and AIDS was a question that came up quite often. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, because I think, you know, um, people used to talk about HIV, AIDS, and a lot of the times people confuse them. Lots of people still talk about AIDS rather than HIV. So they are different things. HIV stands for human immunodeficiency virus. And that is the virus that people transmit between each other. And AIDS is the end point of HIV if the HIV isn't treated. So you don't transmit AIDS between people. AIDS is a just kind of end point. Um, it stands for acquired immune deficiency syndrome. And it basically means it's a point at which it's a definition of a state where someone's immune system has effectively shut down. Okay, um, thank you for that. That was a really good answer, actually. I think that's that's very Thanks. educative. So if you ever ask that question, they'll be like, yeah, got an answer to that. Um, and what is the treatment for HIV and where is the best place to go again? I know some of this you touched on earlier when we were having conversations about it. But just to like underline them would be what's the, you know, the best place to go for treatment and, and will, there, will there ever be a cure? Yeah, so, so there are a few aspects to that. So the treatment for HIV is a group of medicines called antiretrovirals, and they work by stopping the virus from replicating in the body, and then they allow the immune system to repair itself and prevent any further damage. And you go on antiretrovirals now pretty much immediately after you've been diagnosed, and that ensures that you stay healthy. Um, and that would be managed through a specialist HIV clinic. So in north central London, which is, includes Haringey, uh, normally the HIV clinic you would go to is the Bloomsbury Clinic, which is at Mortimer Market Centre off Tottenham Court Road near Warren Street Station. But there are numerous uh, specialist HIV clinics peppered around London, so it just depends where you live really, but you'll be refer to your local clinic and then you'll be retained in treatment there for us you know for the rest of your life and then in terms of uh, a cure for hiv so i think the important thing to say is really just emphasize how effective the treatments are that we have at the moment it's the next best thing to a cure i would say so it's not a cure but at the same time given that it allows people to live long healthy lives and not pass on hiv i think it's fair to say that is the next best thing to a cure eventually I think we certainly do hope that we would have a cure for HIV and also maybe a vaccine for HIV yeah. that would stop people from contracting HIV um, but right now I guess a key thing to point out is that we have this thing called a 2030 goal mm -hmm. uh, which was set by the Department for Health and Social Care mm -hmm. and that basically works on the basis that we already have the HIV prevention technologies to get to a point where by 2030 we hope to see no new HIV transmissions in England. So we're really hoping to get to a point where HIV is no longer being transmitted within the community by 2030. So really in only eight years time. So that's, that's the work not, that yeah. we have now. <laughs> that's, that's not long to go. And that sounds very encouraging. And that's something to look forward to. Uh, we're going to go on a quick musical break. You are listening to the Sexual Health Ins and Out. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Unity Extra. You are just listening to John Legend, Love Me Now. Our key messages are the ins and outs of sexual health, why they are important and why it's important to say something to somebody that you trust and someone who is a professional. Sexual health and relationships matter. We encourage early and regular testing as data shows that the most common and contracted STIs by young people are chlamydia and gonorrhea, which can be asymptomatic. Condoms are the best way to protect yourself against STIs and unplanned pregnancy. Haringey have a free Pan London condom scheme, hashtag come correct. Once you register, you can access free condom across London wherever you see the come correct window sticker. Please go to your local pharmacy in Haringey. So I still have Dominic Riley here with me, who is the prep program manager. And we've been talking about, you know, ways that you can contract HIV, who are the weaker um, people at most at risk, how to protect yourself. Uh, but now I kind of want to delve into it a little bit more and want to talk about treatment options. Let's say that it's gone past that point. Someone has discovered they've done the test and they've discovered that they have HIV. What is the next step? Let's start there. So if someone had a reactive result, um, so usually the first thing that happens is that the test is re-performed just to double check that the person 
is definitely living with HIV. Mm. And that normally happens within the sexual health clinic, but our services are integrated with a specialist HIV clinic. So you'll then be referred to a consultant specialist who then manages your case. And that would probably be the same doctors or nurses you'd be seeing on a recurring basis so you can build a relationship with them. Uh, And then the key thing would be managing you to a point where you become undetectable. Yeah. Uh, So we've also received some questions by young people who live and work and study in Haringey. And we're just going to delve into some of those questions. We're going to be rapid fire, so we're going to get quickly to it. What is the key way for anyone to stay HIV negative? So I guess I'd like to highlight a few key ways. So the first one is HIV testing. And the reason it's so important is because off the back of the results of the HIV test, you can then make informed decisions about your health. So if it tests positive, then you can start treatment as early as possible and you stay healthy while becoming undetectable and removing the risk of passing on HIV. And then if you test negative, then you can can continue to use condoms or PrEP to stay HIV negative. So I would highlight again the importance of using condoms. Um, Where can people get free condoms? So as you've highlighted, the Come Correct scheme in Haringey is a really good one. Um, So once you've signed up to that, if you're under 25, so basically if you're 16 to 24 years old, you can sign up directly online. If you're under 16, come into Archway Centre They've got the young person service there and they will do an assessment and uh, all being well, you should be able to get a come correct card as well. That then entitles you to every week some free condoms uh, until you're 25, until your 25th birthday. So after you're 25, you're on your own. (laughs) I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Now you've got to, but hopefully you've built a habit of being responsible. So now you can put your money where your mouth is. Exactly. And the other place I would want to highlight to people as well. I mean, obviously you can pick up condoms everywhere, um, but at the same time, I would also highlight that there's um, a service actually, which is part of what we run called Freedoms Shop, which is freedoms-shop.com. And you can buy a really wide range of condoms and lube there for essentially cost price. So it means that unlike say um, supermarkets, we're not trying to make uh, money on it mm-hmm. yeah so that's that's certainly f- from what i've seen anyway that's like the cheapest place that i think you can buy um condoms and lube but yeah if you're under 25 and living in Haringey, it's definitely worth taking advantage of come correct okay thank you very much for that i hope you listen to that and you take some advice uh, another question that we had was what are the treatment options for hiv and which ones are offered in Haringey? So the treatment options in Haringey would be the same as anywhere else, which okay. is anti it's, it's that class of drugs called antiretrovirals. So they're bringing the HIV virus in the blood down and stopping it from attacking the immune system and, and allowing you to become undetectable. You can't pass the virus on and you're healthy with a normal life expectancy. Okay. Uh, what is the procedure for getting this kind of treatment? So, I mean, I, I, I can imagine that this is something you would have to go in for, but is it painful? Is it, do they have to take the day off work? Is it uncomfortable? What's the procedure like? No, so at the moment, most of the antiretroviral drugs are pills. Um, okay. So it's just pills that people take. Um, for the most part, um, I mean, basically, most of them don't have side effects, but if they did have side effects... You, there's quite a wide range of them so you could kind of mix up the antiretrovirals that you're taking obviously that's in discussion with your doctor but they will manage that process to make sure that you arrive at a combination of antiretrovirals that works for you so that you don't have side effects um, and as I say at the moment it's pills but actually one of the key developments that's happening in this area is looking at something that we call long-acting injectables which is a little bit like long-acting contraception Mm -hmm. and it means that rather than having to take a pill every day you could for example have an injection and that would last you for two months um and the hope is that that period as well will keep getting longer and longer as the technology improves that sounds brilliant that sounds amazing actually um you know in terms of getting treatment and and someone finding out that they have HIV because I can imagine that would be a difficult time in their life what kind of support is available for someone like that whilst they're going through treatment so I guess the key thing to highlight is aside from the kind of clinical support that you'll get from nurses and your consultant at the clinic um, there are also 
forms of emotional support that you can get. So there's specialist counselling. You'd be referred to a counsellor if you wanted to access that kind of support. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, one thing I would highlight as well is that in terms of the community of people living with HIV is really among patient groups, one of the most mutually supportive and proactive patient groups out there so you would find that there's a lot of peer-to-peer support among people living with HIV and I think that's often something that people find a real salve if they are diagnosed with HIV and a really important source of support is other people who are living with the virus. We're going to go on a quick musical break and when we come back we're going to go into section four. Our key messages are the ins and out of sexual health and why they're important. You should say something to somebody who is trusted and somebody who is a professional. Sexual health and relationships matter. We encourage early and regular testing as data shows that the most common contracted STIs by young people are chlamydia and gonorrhea which can be asymptomatic. Condoms are the best way to protect yourself against STIs and unplanned pregnancy. Haringey have a free Pan London condom scheme, hashtag come correct. Once you register, you can get free condoms across London, wherever you see the sign, come correct. Please go to your local pharmacy in Haringey. Hello and welcome back to Unity Extra. You are listening to No More Drama by Mary J. Blige. It's a lovely Wednesday evening and we are on the Sexual In and Out radio series. Today, we're talking about HIV and PrEP with Dominic Riley, who is the PrEP program manager our key messages are the ins and out of sexual health and why they're important say something to someone who is trusted and who is a professional sexual health and relationships matter we strongly encourage early and regular testing as data shows that the most common contracted stis by young people are chlamydia and gonorrhea which can be asymptomatic condoms are the best way to protect yourself against stis and unplanned pregnancy Haringey have a free Pan London condom scheme, hashtag come correct. Once you register, you can access free condoms all over London where you can see the come correct window sticker. Please go to your local pharmacy in Haringey. So we've spoken about HIV, we've spoken about treatment options, we've spoken about what support is available for those people. And now we're going to get into PrEP because we've mentioned PrEP a few times. We've defined HIV, we've defined AIDS. Now let's get, let's dig in a little bit deeper into PrEP. What is PrEP? If you just break that down for me as someone who has no clue about medical terms. Sure, yeah. So it stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis. And if you want to get into the technicalities of it, then prophylaxis is a category of preventative medicine. So it prevents something from happening. And pre-exposure indicates that you take that medicine before the exposure to the virus. So you're taking it in advance. The key messages, I guess, that I would want people to go away with today would be that PrEP is a medication taken by people who are HIV negative, so they don't have HIV, and it prevents them from contracting HIV, even if they're exposed to the virus. So if they did have sex with somebody who had HIV and they weren't undetectable, the person they were having sex with, even if they came into contact with it because they're on PrEP, they're not going to contract HIV is what we're saying. And it's 99% effective when taken correctly. So it's been a bit of a game changer, really, when it comes to HIV prevention. Yeah, no, it sounds like it. Uh, we've also received some questions by young people in the Haringey who live, work and study. Uh, and as always, I'm going to do them as much justice as I can by asking you the questions because you're the right man for the job. You have all the answers. Uh, so how does one actually get PrEP? And, and you know, I mean, you've said, does it actually work? They they want to know yeah i mean it does work and i mean that's a key message that we want to get out there as well that it is effective um so you would get it um from your local sexual health clinic and one way to look up where your local clinic is that offers prep is uh, again we talked about sexual health london earlier which is where you can order those mail order testing kits Mm -hmm. so if you go to shl.uk forward slash prep then you can look up where your local sexual health clinic is that offers prep in haringey the closest clinics would probably be archway center which is next to aldi um opposite archway tube or you've got mortimer market center and also it's offered at edgeware community hospital for people that are more on the kind of barnet side um and then people maybe who are in the east of haringey it's worth saying it's also offered at homerton hospital sexual health services so you would have that at the homerton and st leonard's as well would both offer that 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've said this works. I believe you when you say that it works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> however, however, the young people want to know what kind of research have actually been done yeah. to make sure that the medication actually works. And not only that it works, that there are no major side effects. Sure. So um, there's been a number of really extensive studies done with thousands of people, both in England and abroad. Uh, and that's how collectively we came to this 99% figure. Um, and it's worth saying as well, the vast majority of people who take PrEP experience no side effects. And that is something that's monitored when you're on PrEP, you know, you're asked about that. You do come in for recurring appointments when you're on PrEP. So it's not just something where, uh, at the moment anyway, it's not just something where you go and pick it up from your pharmacist once you've started on it. You're in care at the clinic. Um, so that might be as little as coming in once a year and then you might do a telephone appointment at six months or something like that or mail some prep out. But the point is, at least once a year, you're going to be coming into the clinic and talking about being on prep. I guess it might be useful to talk about a little bit just how it actually works sort of clinically or medically. Yeah, definitely. So in terms of how HIV becomes established in the body, once it's in your body, it enters into a type of immune system cell, a white blood cell called a CD4 or T cell. So that's just basically, it's a type of immune cell. It goes through the wall of it, gets inside it, and it uses the DNA that's in that cell to reproduce itself. So it uses that DNA to make loads and loads of, of HIV. Okay. And that's how it becomes like a takeover your infection. Whole body. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And what PrEP does, the medication basically stops the HIV from getting through that cell wall in the first place. So it can't access the DNA and, and it can't, can't reproduce itself. Yeah. yeah. So basically, because it disrupts that process it's stopping you from ever developing hiv and that's mm. why it's like just sometimes i think explaining the science of it actually yeah, helps understand definitely. why it's effective definitely i think it makes when you break it down and you understand what's going on it makes a lot more sense um in terms of 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 talking about prep because we're still on that topic do you still have to test for hiv if you're taking prep because obviously prep is for people who don't have the virus do you still have to continually test for it yeah so it's actually a prerequisite of being on prep is that you would regularly test for okay. hiv and i guess like even though we're confident that if you're taking prep correctly you're not going to develop hiv is equally it possible, we need to well at the moment we've got this 99 percent figure and i guess it's important to say that the reason that we can't say 100% is because we do still get people who in theory are on PrEP and they develop HIV. But, and again, I can't talk to every single case, but I think the sense that we have, because we know PrEP works medically mm -hmm. the sense that we have is like sometimes maybe people have issues adhering to the medication so it's actually more around whether or not they were if they don't take it properly or they yeah. miss one or something like that okay yeah that might be a factor in it for example so it's not that we don't have faith in it we do have faith in it and the fact that it works um but the reason obviously that we would want to keep testing you for HIV is really just because you can't guarantee 100% that you are going to take it in the right way. And also, it's just an extra safety measure, basically, um, because, you know, the important thing is if you did develop HIV, then you then need to be going on the full range of uh, antiretroviral treatments I was talking about earlier, rather than just PrEP. Um, so it's really also just about kind of making sure that people on PrEP stay as healthy as possible. Um, one other thing that I did want to highlight about it is actually just if people are wondering what PrEP actually is, so we've said it's a medication. At the moment, again, that's a pill. Usually people take it as a daily thing. So they take one pill a day and um, that then covers them for all eventual, like they're basically covered all of the time. So whenever they have sex, they've got that protection there. People also do something called event-based or on-demand prep, mm -hmm. which is more around if you know that you're maybe only having sex at weekends or you only want to use it periodically because, say, I don't know, you're going on um, a holiday or something like that and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to use condoms all of the time for whatever reason, then you could take prep during that period. And the way that you quick start prep if you're doing it on-demand or event-based is you take two pills two hours before you're going to have sex 
and then you have the sex and then you take one pill a day for two days after the sex. So that means rather than if someone's put off by the idea of taking a pill every, every single day. day, it's worth just highlighting that there are other ways of doing it that they could think about that would mean that they don't have to take medication all day, yeah, every day. Um, and I mean, I think just one important thing there is at the moment that's only recommended for men. So women, if they want to go on PrEP, because of the research that's been done so far, it's usually recommended that they take daily PrEP. Mm -hmm. So they do take a pill a day. But the advice, as I understand it, the advice on that may be changing at some point in the future. But it's important to say at the moment, the official advice is that a woman who goes on PrEP should be taking one pill a day. Yeah. If you're a guy, you have the option of either doing it event-based, as I said, or doing it daily. Yeah, and of course, like, PrEP protects you. I mean, it protects you from, from HIV, but it doesn't protect you from unplanned pregnancies, which is why you need to use a condom. Another question that we had come in is, that how safe is your information if you are someone with HIV in Haringey? Because I can imagine the emotional side of things for people might be quite concerning and makes them not want to actually reach out to someone that they trust or reach out to a professional yeah so i think the important thing to say about sexual health and hiv services is that they are delivered confidentially non-judgmentally and your information is safe um and it's within your control as well so um nobody is going to disclose your status to somebody else it's entirely if you tested positive for hiv it's up to you to disclose your status to people no one's ever going to do that for you um so it is confidential and the information is completely safe yeah brilliant thank you very much for that um i know we mentioned this earlier we touched we touched on it um but i just wanted to get some clarification on it because we talked about having unprotected sex um with someone who has hiv can you just clarify like is it is it is it risky or how risky is it for someone to have unprotected sex with someone that has HIV, even if the person is taking um, their medication or it, let's do one if they're taking medication and if they're not taking medication? Yeah. So if they are taking medication and it's been confirmed that they're undetectable and I guess in terms of time frames, it's also worth saying that can happen in as little as a month after somebody going on that medication. So mm -hmm. it's not something that necessarily takes a long time. But once that's been confirmed that they're undetectable, then even if they weren't using condoms, we would say they can't pass the virus on. If it hasn't been confirmed that they're undetectable, then in that case, certainly if they were having sex, then we would recommend that somebody who is living with HIV and not undetectable uses condoms um, to have sex. That is brilliant. Thank you very much. I think those are most of the questions that we had. I'm trying to think. I think you've covered most of my questions. Uh, but for someone who is listening to the show right now, uh, what would be like the key takeaway message? If if they're like, no, I'm, I can't sit here and listen to the entire thing. Or I'm about to jump on the train. I'm going to lose my signal. What's the yeah. one thing you want them to take away from the show? Can I do three things in one sentence? You can do five if you want. <laughs> so the first thing is test for HIV regularly. Yep. And then use condoms because they protect you against HIV and a wide range of other STIs. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, unplanned pregnancy. And then if you struggle to use condoms, we now have this technology available, PrEP, which is free at NHS sexual health clinics. And that will prevent you from developing HIV if you struggle to use condoms. So Brilliant. testing condoms prep. Thank you so much, Dominic. You heard it from the professional test, use condoms and prep. It was such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you Thank so you. much. Uh, you are listening to the ins and out of sexual health and why they're important. Say someone to someone who is trusted and who is a professional. Sexual health and relationships matter. We encourage early and regular testing as data shows that the most common contracted STIs by young people are chlamydia and gonorrhea, which can be asymptomatic. Condoms are the best way to protect yourself against STI and unplanned pregnancy. Haringey have a free pan London condom scheme, hashtag come correct. Once you register, you can come across free condoms all around London. Wherever you see the sticker come correct, please go to your local pharmacy in Haringey. Once again, I want to say thank you to Dominic and thank you to everybody listening. I will see you next time. Have a good evening. 
Bye. Sexual Health Unwrapped, the ins and outs, the three-part radio series on Unity Extra. Listen next Wednesday from 7 till 8 p.m. where your questions get answered by healthcare professionals about sexual health, from how to stay safe and avoid sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. Sexual Health Unwrapped, the ins and outs. Listen next Wednesday on Unity Extra.